far too large to rightfully be called a sword. It was larger, thicker, heavier, and cruder than any normal blade. By all accounts, it was no more than a hulking mass of iron. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Dumpstat. I am the Void. Oh. No. Okay. No. Oh. Oh. Mm. I'm a lich. Name's Brill. I'm not even gonna. I had a whole thing planned. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I did counterspell on your intro. Oh, you can't do that. Um, that's right. Yep. Hellish rebuke. Oof. Um. So I I wanted to talk to you today about a very interesting and very uh, cool thing that we have been doing again, Mm -hmm. which is the domains. We're going through all the domains for clerics because we are of the opinion that clerics are one of the best and underutilized classes in D&D. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. Yeah, I love clerics and I think that there's a lot to offer there. So I'm glad to be getting back into it. Yeah, we took a little bit of time off from this, but we're diving back in with light and nature domains. Mm-hmm. So I kind of have a story to set up my nature domain class. Okay. Because I had originally was really trying to think of ways to make the nature domain stick in a role playing sense. Yeah. Essentially, a cleric, as we mentioned last episode, is this priest type who has a connection to a god, not like a warlock or a paladin, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but more in this all-encompassing spiritual light. And the many domains are there to help guide the player into making some kind of character for a god that works very, very well. Mm -hmm. Now, I was talking about last week the fact that there are millions of these domains. Millions. Yes. And when I was looking for inspiration for this week of not only making a cleric of this domain, but also thinking of what characters I would like to play. Yeah. This is actually a true story. I was speaking to my lady lich. Okay. How's she doing, by the way? She's undead. Mm. So we were back and forth, back and forth. You know, Mm -hmm. every once in a while you pull the phylactery out and let her touch yours and you touch hers. You know, it's fun. Mm. But I see. Okay, we were we were going back and forth. And basically the purpose of this exchange was so that she can get to me that Amazon exists. Or that shopping online is a thing. I am stupid, violently so. And anytime I go online to buy anything, as soon as it gives a credit card, I'm like, I can't figure this out. I'll just go to a store. (laughs) Man, (laughs) I need to give you some computer lessons. I know. it's, It's really bad. But I was talking to her and eventually it got to the topic of violence right? Mm. Violence towards other people. Because I basically was trying to tell her about this dream I had where you came to visit me in my lair and you knocked on the door and I opened up the door and I tased you in the neck and you dropped. (laughs) And like, you're so physically weak that you're Like you would foam at the mouth. And then the rest of my idea was me running about like to my friends and family and them going like, Hey, how are you? And I tase them in the face every time someone greets me. You said this is a true story. This is, this is a dream I had and here's how it ends. And I promise this (laughs) relates to the domain I had after I realized that I had such a beautiful idea to prank people with tasers. She looks on in horror as I figure out that I can buy a taser online. And <laughs> she had been forcing me to use this online checking out nonsense. And I figure out to myself, oh my God, I can buy them. So they're in the mail. And that's why that inspired me. Boom. I'm doing the uh, trickery domain, not the nature domain today. Boom. Oh, Big review. You, you just oh got my pranked. Word. You just got pranked. You just pranked me so bad. I thought you were doing nature. No, I'm not. I'm doing trickery. I said I was doing nature. 
Now, what if I was doing trickery? You're not, though. We can't just both have a plot Wait. twist for trickery. You're doing light, Are stupid. Are you sure? Oh, no. I think my, I think my <laughs> notes say something different here. I disagree with you. They can't. <laughs> They're not allowed to. All right. We'll have to find something else here quick. Give me a second. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't uh, have that. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm tried. I'll be talking about, um, what's this? Uh, yes, you light will. Domain. Yeah, yes, you will. That one. Okay. So the trickery domain, I, I believe, is one of those domains that a lot of people have fun with because it's essentially a taser for your friends. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's the domain where you are summoning power from trickery gods. Think in D&D terms, Gar Glittergold of the gnomes. But if you want to just real life, mm. you know, mythologies that are out there, Loki, yeah. you know, for all those Norse fans, it's the god of mischief. It's the god of strange rebels, liberators. They mock tyrants. They they mock everybody. Yeah. And these gods needs cleric too. And this is why I kind of wanted to immediately juxtapose the trickery domain with the domains we had last time. The domains we had last time, life and, and knowledge, I feel as though when people mm -hmm. think clerics, those can be in the realm of cleric, mm -hmm. you know, they can be yeah. in the clergy and no one really bats an eye, but a mm -hmm. trickery, a, a god of mischief. And it's not a cult. It's a legit practice. Mm -hmm. You have a legit chapel. You are just throwing pies in people's faces 24 seven. Mm -hmm. It's true. So you can get second level invoke duplicity mm -hmm. as an action. You create a perfect illusion of yourself that lasts one minute or until you lose your concentration great good stuff yeah at level one starting when you choose your domain you can use an action to touch another willing creature to give an advantage of dexterity cell so you're starting to look at that and you go oh well you're just kind of a pseudo rogue hang on you go later more pseudo rogue type stuff mm -hmm. at level six you can channel your divinity to vanish but i like to think in like the the uh, peeves from harry potter type you know you vanish mm -hmm. and you're clearly villainous of some sort and then of course improved duplicity at level 17 you create four duplicates of yourself instead of one you make shadow clones listen <laughs> i okay i i gotta just say this right now yeah this is one of my favorite domains is it it really is because I think what you're given wise is definitely going to like, you're going to deceive people. You can really just go off the deep end role playing wise because the idea sure. of a mischief God is in so many cultures, but it's different in every culture. And that mm -hmm. those differences yeah. create yeah. such strange and wild variables behind what you can do as a player. So yeah. if you're a life player or if you're a knowledge player, I think that you are going to fall into certain traps that we didn't really cover last episode in the sense of if you're life, you're always going to be kind of the good guy. You're always going to be fertile. And if your knowledge, yeah. you can go for dark and evil knowledge or horrible knowledge or good knowledge. And that gives you more of a wide variety. But this is just, man, anything you want. I mean, we're talking flying spaghetti monster shit right here, yeah. bro. You can yep. really, what's the, um, in Elder Scrolls, who's the chaos um. god? Who has who's like split down the middle and he like flips flops? Shirogorath. Yes, I think it's. I think that's correct. And he gives you the Jabberwocky. Yep, it's yeah, the oh, that, Jabberwock, Jabberwock. I think for me that is something that people need to overwhelmingly accept and enjoy. I, I mean, people like Yum. chaotic characters to begin with, but very rarely do you have the excuse of my God is trying to be chaotic as well. Moreover, mm -hmm. just the quest lines you could get from a mischief God are so interesting, whether that's to tear down society or prank the king or yeah. one of my personal favorites, you know, crash a wedding. There, there doesn't have to be any grand scheme or cabal. If it's a mischief god, he's here to play jokes, my dude. So there's no real reason to have unlimited horrible stakes. And like the taser going into Doc's neck, 
that made me feel so good earlier. It, it's it's the malicious intent, but it's not too bad. First off, keep that taser away from me. <laughs> but second, uh, I think something else that's really cool about trickery domains is it, it's yes, gods that play jokes and pranks and everything. Absolutely. But you also look at another prominent example in Critical Role. You have Laura Bailey's character, Jester, who is a trickster cleric. Oh, I forgot all about that. Yeah. And the Traveler is, I, I haven't caught up on Critical Role yet, so uh, no spoilers, don't worry. But like the Traveler is very mysterious. We know very little about the Traveler itself, at least at this point at episode 39. But it's um <laughs> the um but the thing is is that like it plays well into Laura's character who is very much so like a somewhat juvenile prankster kind of character, but also the trickery domain acts really well for a character who wants to do a stealthy class that's still casting a lot of spells. Right. Because you should get the arcane trickster in the rogue and that's fine but those are like oh you have a better mage hand and you have a few spells if you want the spell powerhouse Uh, but you also want to be stealthy trickster domain absolutely 100 percent. let me go through some of the the tricky domain spells sure first of course is charm person and disguise self Mm -hmm. which you know basic starter pack Yep. Uh, third, you get my uh, mirror image, minor image. <laughs> it's just a small U. Uh, mirror <laughs> image and pass without trace. Pass without trace, yep. famously broken. Yep. Fifth, you get blink and dispel magic, which mm. is fantastic. Seventh, you get dimension door and polymorph. And finally, yeah. if you want to go full Gilderoy Lockhart, which you all should. At ninth, you get dominate person and modify memory. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go specifically into what each of those spells do. You can absolutely look them up on your own. However, yep. just from hearing the come on, dominate person and modify. Me- you know what that fucking does, buddy. Yeah, you can figure that out. So in the vein of what you said, it is the mischief mecca of D D yep. in a way it, it allows mm-hmm. you to really go off the deep end and i know there are some chaos characters right now who are going ooh because there's a lot of when we speak about alignment and you start to get to the chaotics chaotic neutral and chaotic evil which are where a lot of murder hobos live <laughs> are two alignments that overwhelmingly i feel as though drop the ball in role playing a lot and the excuses for why they do what Mm -hmm. i kind of find this to be a helpful way for a dm to control chaos a little bit yeah in the sense of oh you want to do something crazy and wild why don't you take orders from a wild god that way the dm can still kind of make sure that not every you know dwarven girl gets pregnant and not all the towns get burned down Right. And the player can still cr- scratch that itch of like, yes, absolutely. let me break something. You absolutely. Know. Yeah. And I think those spells, uh, you get to have some power with that. Blink and mirror image and stuff is very good for casting things for you know your own purposes. But pass without a trace, of course, just improving your stealth to exorbitant amounts is a good teamwork spell. And so like you should definitely do a trickery domain. And not tell people that you're a trickery domain, but just, right. you know, say that, oh, yeah, you're a cleric, right? You know, nothing more about it. And have these really nice spells for getting to kind of the underbelly of your campaign. I think it's really cool. I think I think the spells here are awesome. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. And they're all very good role playing spells. Mm-hmm. You're not, it's not like you cast 18 fireballs, which is great. But it's right. a different kind of destruction that you're after yep. with this. It definitely involves a lot of creativity when you play this because it's it's not all, hey, this X happens when you cast Y. It's like, all right, this effect happens. How are you going to do that? So if, if you're a person that likes to use spells creatively, then this is definitely the class to do that. Right. And not to mention, as you mentioned before about 
uh, just let, let, let's say role playing wise, you just say you're a cleric. But if they need mm-hmm. to ask for a god, you're a trickery domain, baby. Say mm-hmm. whatever you want. Yeah. Say Primus. Like, like I, I think the god would get more of a, at least a lot of the mischief gods I know would get more of a kick out of you lying. Yeah. And, and that's that's the thing. It's the intent. Maybe not to like mischief gods kind of run the gamut of overthrowing society to overthrowing your sister who's too fat for that bench. You know, like. There's kind of that weird back and forth with how much are they going to like you could say chaos God, you know, and watch the your God wants to rain like the strangest, you know, flavor ice cream pistachio from the heavens. But it could also be your God is just like, hey, make that old guy trip. That's like how you pray to me <laughs> is to make those that old yep. person break yep. a hip which is awful but i love it yeah and i think it's an interesting way to think about it in an alignment sense it's an interesting way to think about chaotic evil because like you think about Shiagorath and the elder scrolls Shiagorath isn't like a mean person per se he's not like you know literally no, vying to like kill everybody but he's just he does what he wants for his own entertainment and if you do that yeah. and you entertain him he gives you a cookie it's it's a pretty basic deal yeah and like that's that's a pretty cool chaotic evil way to play that isn't like yeah i'm gonna burn everything down it's like no right. but you're gonna raise a little hell here and there wherever you go which is which is good yeah absolutely i think and that's it's it's a great way to play a character that's very different that's not going to tear your party apart and not destroy all of your DM's plans, but you can definitely mess with your DM a lot playing this type of character. Absolutely. And like I said before, creation-wise, this will run the gamut. Yep. I I actually love the fact that of many, like there are other domains here that you're going to get a wide diversity when you hear that two people are of the same domain right? Mm-hmm. Trickery yeah. domain is one of those domains where I sit there and I go, oh, you're never going to see two alike. Really? You might get a few that are maybe doing similar things, but aesthetically speaking, unless they don't both pick Loki, you're going to get some weird shit, man. Yeah. And because mischief gods are inherently different from each other. Like you said, they run the gamut from Sigurath, who is in and of himself just doing his own thing. Right. Versus I could even see a god. Uh, I believe it's it ends with the word tap. I forget. But there's like an HP mm. Lovecraft god. That you could argue is a mischief god who clearly wants the death of the universe, but with a smile, you know, shit like that. So you could really play around with it. So it really can go from chaotic good to chaotic evil. You could be a good guy who's a trickster asshole. You Mm -hmm. know, we love funny boys, uh, but it it really anything you want. And I had to play a prank on Doc to allow me to even (laughs) mention I, you know, I I appreciate it. You know, my fighter soul is a little bit betrayed, but I will allow it. I flanked him. Yep. (laughs) There's flanking. Oh, gosh. There's flanking involved now. So I will definitely go back to the characters that I created for Trickery Domain, but I want to go over to what you have today. Yeah. Good, sir. Well, it definitely wasn't Trickery Domain. I can tell you that much. Um, But (laughs) no, uh, let's talk about Light Domain. So Light Domain, again, this is I'm doing the quintessential clerics, I feel like. You are. The Light Domain, if you're not doing a Life Domain cleric, then you might be thinking about a light domain. The difference is that instead of a lot of healing spells and stuff like that, which you still have, light domain is everything about holy light and fire. So mainly you're thinking about like Helm, Lathander, the Silver Flame, people like that, Apollo, if you're again going into like real world mythology there. Right. The light domain has interesting perspectives. Again, more of a classic holy cleric who's probably lawful good, but they don't have to be that way necessarily because they have a lot of fire spells and you can flavor that in a lot of different ways. So let's look over this. Features, right? Well, what do you think that you're going to get from the light domain? 
uh, Irish Witch Brill. Are you thinking? Well, I would imagine dancing. Li- I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but- <laughs> well, close. Close, yeah. You would get a bunch of fire spells, I'd imagine. Yep, and, fire and spell. divine light. Yeah, oh man, you're dancing right around it. And that, wow, that was a bad pun. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you gain the light cantrip. Okay. When you'd go into this domain. So, all right. Light cantrip? Yeah, good. You light up your sword or you light up a, a torch or just some other object. A luminous. Yep, it made sense. All right. Light domain, you get the light cantrip. You get something called Warding Flare, which you have limited abilities on, but you basically, at any given chance, become Blitz from Rainbow Six Siege and you just flash a huge light and whoever's attacking oh. you just gets blinded, right? They don't get blinded per se, but they get disadvantage on their attack roll, which is really nice in case if that big bad is coming after you and you just really don't want to be hit right now. Uh, Channel of Divinity, Radiance of the Dawn. That's a pretty good one where you use an action, you present your holy symbol, and if the creature fails their constitution saving throw, they basically take a bunch of radiant damage. So that's that's nice. You know, if you're fighting ghosts and things like that, you can just do a ton of radiant damage on them. Improved flare, the warning flare gets a buff. There's corona of light. You basically create an aura of sunlight around you. Oh. For like one minute, and you emit bright light. All of the enemies in the 60 foot area of the bright light get disadvantage on saving throws or any spell that deals fire or radiant damage. I, I, I do have a question. Sure. Spells wise for this domain, yes. we're talking a lot of fire, yes. right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And so and going into that, obviously, there's a lot of with the warding flares and your 17th level feature, you get kind of a buff to all these light and fire spells. First level spells, burning hands and fairy fire. Very good for, you know, dealing lots of damage to an area or just targeting for lots of people. Third level flaming sphere and scorching ray. Both of them are really nice spells to have that are attacking lots of people. Fifth level, you have daylight and fireball. Fireball is, of course, a classic. Seventh level, guardian of faith and wall of fire. And then ninth level, you have flame strike and strying. So strying is interesting. Of course, that's a a late game spell. That's actually a fifth level spell, but you get it on your ninth cleric level. But strying is... um. I don't know. Like, it, it makes sense that you would be illuminated by your god, pun intended, um, <laughs> by strying. But that could be kind of right. part of the flavor of your character is that absolutely you kind of become not to dip into knowledge cleric, but like you kind of gain a a sense of, of divine energy or divine knowledge over you a might, situation. You might say you might say you're enlightened. Oh, oh, oh. oh really warms the heart. Oh. Uh, I'm uh, yep nine psychic damage man it'll get you um <laughs> so uh, you know lots of flame spells lots of flame spells most of these are flame spells so let's talk about this right right what kind of clerics can you role play with this because obviously like helm and other people it's like yeah light you know it, it makes sense but i was thinking there's a lot of applications for fire as well oh absolutely and you know, if you wanted to be, I don't know, uh, a dragon, you know, cultist, yeah. this would be a really good domain for I that. I would say so too, yeah. yeah. Because you a get... A red dragon priestess, yeah, man. Exactly. You get all of those fire spells. It, it makes sense that, you know, the aspect of the dragon is one with your soul. And with that reskin, you immediately break the mold of the good, pure, light mm-hmm. kind of, you know, normalcy you get with this class. Absolutely. It's not war domain, which is its own domain in itself, but you get that I will purge the land sort of fire nation sort of feel to it with this domain. So we often culturally think of light as in good, but you don't have to necessarily do that with this class. It's very easy just to twist it a little bit and get that like really like lawful evil side to it where you're just going to scorch everyone to death that doesn't listen to you i think that's pretty cool 
I, I enjoy this domain for that reason. When I played this domain, because it, one of my characters was was this domain, it was a cleric of helm. And being able to do the light spells, being able to have like spiritual weapon and and some of those other things, which isn't specific to light domain, but like point out the kind of flavors of like everything's emitting light and has this fiery passion to it. And it was a lot of fun because you got to kind of feel very passionate about the character that you were playing because the character itself with light and fire is very passionate. Right. On a practical perspective, being able to dive into a cave and not really have to worry about light because everything that you're casting is emitting some sort of laser show. That's always really nice to have. I don't know. What do you think? I think that this has more applications than we give it credit for in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at this, your immediate idea is that purging light. But in the same sense, you immediately gave something that was a dragon priestess, which already shows that there is variety here. My first thought when I looked at it was, of course, this is going to follow into some sun god, right? Right. Of some sort. The other thing that I learned or that I was thinking about was the fact that a sun god doesn't need to be holy in a, in a sense, in that, in that mm-hmm. Christian sense. Because we, we think of sun gods now and we think of them as, you know, these harbingers of light and knowledge, and that's the symbolism that we attribute to them. However, I was thinking about that Aztec, Inca, sun god that you have to sacrifice blood to and have that sun god aesthetic. There's a character in Mortal Kombat, the recent Mortal Kombat, who's, uh, I forget his name, he's a Khan too, not Shao Khan, different Khan. And his whole shtick is essentially being a sun god who wants blood sacrifices. It's really cool. Yeah. And when I look at that, I go, oh, so that means that it's not just purifying light from Yahweh. It's something that can be a lot more primal and a lot more kind of sinister. Human sacrifices are sinister. I I think that kind of brings this maybe to lawful neutral. I think you're always going to have lawful types in this domain. And besides the Inca Aztec connection that you can make for a sun god, you can also weave it into a few other things. So I'm a comic book fan. And I, when I look at the light domain cleric, especially with the fire spells, my immediate brain goes, I'm going to make a fire ganasi. I'm going to name him Johnny Storm. And he's going to be the human torch. Um, now, that kind of goes back to our episode beforehand about original and unoriginal characters. Yeah. But I think that that can be a fun way to get people involved with this. Mm -hmm. If you want the fire aesthetic, if you want the sun aesthetic. Yeah. I had one guy play a light domain cleric of the eclipse. He basically just gave all of his fire a blue tint to his eclipse god. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Very Azula. Yeah. I really enjoyed what he had done with that Mm -hmm. and how he decided to maneuver into how to work with this part of the lore. Because I I can definitely see where some people would look at this and feel a little bit restrained. Mm -hmm. All these classes and all these domains, especially these domains, some of them you need to work a little bit harder to stand out but others of them you're just gonna it's just gonna go it's just gonna roll fine so i think that there's that give and take there where you need to figure that out i'm saying there a lot i'm saying you know a lot i'm saying (laughs) now a lot yeah you ever hear yourself and you're like oh no oh no i mean hearing you is like that all the time oh oh don't Mm. cut me yeah i i will i'm a fighter is what i do baby (laughs) uh um well then, uh, no, I think it, flavoring things is half the battle. I mean, whether you're doing it with trickery domain or we're doing it with light domain, uh, being able to, I mean, having the standard like, yep, my light domain cleric does light. Yep, my trickery domain does Loki, you know, the, the trickster god. Like, that's all fine and good and great. But if you want something that's a little bit different, being able to create a concept and then find one of these domains and apply it to that concept is always a lot of fun. And Light Domain definitely has a large repertoire of what you can apply to it. Um, 
you know, like if you're playing an ancient Egypt campaign, like Ra, the sun god. I'm going to look this up real quick. Oh, no. Here's the thing. I'm really good at mythology, so I want to see you get something wrong. Yep. Falcon. So Ra, so Ra <laughs> has the, the, the image of a falcon, right? So like, you know, just having like falcon embroidery uh, just on like tattoos and you know, it's part of your armor, or if you even have a helmet that is or, a falcon. Or if you're not subtle at all, just be an Aarakocra bird person. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that, um, there are some players who are just like, look at my weaved pelt that I put upon my back. And then there's other players who are just like, well, I worship a turtle god and I'm a turtle. So yeah. <laughs> how are you today? Yep, exactly. But I mean, like, Concepts like that are uh, plentiful, especially with the light domain. I uh, I think that there are some really fun ways that you can go down different paths with the light domain. Well, like all of mm -hmm. these domains, again, that's the thesis of this entire side tangent that we're doing with Dumpstat, which is clerics. There's a lot of cool shit that you can do, man especially with some of these spells they give you. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, looking at what you have for Light Domain, just off the top of my head, I think not only are they yep. fun spells to use combatively, but, I mean, who doesn't want to be the guy who, mm -hmm. like Gandalf the White, emerges in the Underdark, a shining, mm -hmm. shining rays spew out, blinding the other goblins or underdark inhabitants as yep. they screech and flee as you start shooting fireballs left and right. Yeah. I mean, that just sounds like yeah. a great idea and a lot of fun to play. Of course. It's awesome. It's a ton of fun. And it's having the repertoire of really fun, awesome spells that the Light Domain gives you. It absolutely is super cool to just play that character that has that arsenal and can dish out all of that damage, as well as you know, just kind of have that character that is, I am, you know, Fury or I am the Light, whatever you want to call it. Right. There are other basic magic items that you can get that give off light. And I think that you could also acquire those if you wanted to really or speak with your DM mm -hmm. about maybe searching for those types of magic items to mm -hmm. really get you going into something strange or yeah. new or exciting for that domain. There's a lot of things that you can basically seek out as well Absolutely. as a light domain that I think not a lot of people do. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the things that I created. I made three characters for Trickery Domain because I wanted to show that it runs the gamut. Oh, man. In a way that is interesting and new. Okay. So my first character, who originally I na I named after an NPC that I uh, I worked and played with, which was Tarot Falstaff. Falstaff, of course, referencing <laughs> the Falstaff of Shakespeare, because clearly yeah. I am not one of those people who can you know let go. But <laughs> I, I decided to rename him something better, yeah. uh, uh, Father Abraham. Uh, I like that kind of more. Does, does he have many sons? Uh, he, many sons does Father Abraham. I am one of them. And so there are you. you. <laughs> uh, so let's all praise the void. Uh, so uh. <laughs> he's, um, I want, he's, he's basically almost a one-to-one -one rip on Aleister Crowley. Mm. I wanted to, in the classic occult teachings, Aleister Crowley is this monolith of character he's a titan amongst titans he's the chaos magic he's a very bad person he's addicted to a lot of things but he's basically all that magical thinking a lot of that toned down wicca shit that some of you guys play with out there alistair crowley is a lot of what brought crazy magic to the mainstream and i just love the idea of the long hooded figures with the pointy top like a wizard and it's not the clan it's something occult why'd they have to take it just decked out in right. these elaborate jewels on his fingers and up his arms and around his neck all with these different strange sigils and symbolism and i wanted to actually make a trickster god that isn't really a trickster god sure. you know and give it that spin yeah so uh, i was really inspired for him at least to focus on maybe some of the more 
greater evils of the time. Okay. And I tried to basically put the Demogorgon in this trickster box. The Demogorgon is a demon lord who is basically the embodiment of pure chaos, but I wanted to make that chaos way more quirky than just untamed raw primal oozes, which I could imagine is a little complicated or annoying to some. He's supposed to be a spout of madness, but madness to me, I want to make it more quirky and still malicious. However, it's still evil. It's still chaotic evil. He's still doing very bad things. But when he inevitably, you know, knocks over that mm-hmm. old man, he's probably going to stab him a few times on the way down, <laughs> you know, and probably piss on him and casually and probably make a, a, a sigil around him and do a very strange prayer. Exactly. So that was kind of what I was going with him. My other character, I wanted to show more of the fun side of things. So I made another Butterlegs. Uh, last week, people remember Butterlegs, oh. Oh, or last time was Butterlegs, I believe its name was Butterlegs, and I decided to go with Hoot Butterlegs, uh, who is going to be a gnome, uh. he is a red-headed gnome for glitter gold, he is the definition of Fred and George Weasley from Harry Potter, <laughs> he's chaotic good, he's just fun, He's trying to play pranks on people. He also has a little bit of that monk Gyatso. I want to have him be a little zen about his humor. So running about the world with his party, the quintessential adventurer, loves to see things, love to look around, love to have fun, and love to prank people. Mm-hmm. Like really, really prank people. Yeah. The last one I had, so the first one was like abstract magic. The second one was kind of malicious in a fun way. The last one, uh, well, not malicious, yeah. uh, you know, uh, he's, he's <laughs> benevolent, but he's, you know, mischievous. I, I, I wanted to have something that was a little bit more, I guess you might call it mainstream. Okay. And this one was hard for me not to use Loki because I know that people have that attachment to Loki and all that baggage that comes along with making a Loki character now. Right. And I also want to expand the realms of thinking when it comes to mythology in a small way. So I picked Mercury's, also known as Hermes, for the god of this character, oh. who is, yeah, very inspired by the new book coming out in a few weeks, the mythic odyssey of Therios, which is going to be a Yum. Magic the Gathering based D&D book but is basically the realm of gods and monsters. It's Greek gods. Super excited for that. Yeah, I wanted to have him be the classic demigod. Like his his blood relation to the god is what fuels him as opposed to just, you know, being touched by it or seeking out said god. I wanted to have that blood relation or relationship with Mercury's Hermes, who is in and of himself a trickster god. But if you look through his myths, he's a little bit more of a dick than Glitter Gold. Hmm. He's going to do something maybe a little bit closer to Loki and this is the mischief god that I'd be willing to say is he's like trying to maybe overthrow a king right? and he's trying to get somewhere and really sink his teeth into the actual society at large. Oh and by the way, he's arteristic, arterostic arterostic. Altruistic? No, arterostic. Shut up I did like a whole whole name translation for this stupid guy Uh, Mercury's is that's his full name okay it's kind of silly but he's definitely the middle road of your benevolent to your extreme chaos master yeah i wanted to make something that was i definitely said that i literally made a name and said it wrong (laughs) that's hilarious i i am god i build you i create you i don't know who the fuck you are um But I I think that that's kind of me trying to show off with, you know, minor examples. I'm not going to go into their backstories too much. Uh, Mm -hmm. Definitely my Aleister Crowley rip. I wanted to make him more of the noble sort. I wanted to make my butter legs more of the folk hero sort. You get it. Yeah. Background in d and I, I mean, you can really run the gamut with this. You could be a veteran. You could be anything with a trickster domain. I, I mean, sky is mm-hmm. the limit for the chaos that you will bring upon the land of Faerun. Do whatever the fuck you want, man. Tamriel, whatever, man. It, right. It's going to get rough for the people living there because you're coming to town. You're dominating people. You're doing weird magic tricks. You're making shadow clones. Father Abraham and his many sons are about to take this place down a notch to the Demogorgon. 
<laughs> That's right. It, those sound super fun. Uh, now, I didn't create three characters, right? And I actually kind of created more of a, a concept instead. But for the light domain, one of the clerics that I kind of came up with was basically from the Order of Helm. Going into some of the weird, nerdy D&D lore. Oh, they love it. There's actually a subsection of Helm, Helm's church, that helps travelers. They're specifically there to assist travelers in their journeys and everything. Whereas normally they're just off killing monsters and whatnot. I thought it was kind of cool to have the idea of a subsection of this subsection of an order that went into the Underdark. Ooh. And you have this light domain cleric that has this kind of fiery purging passion of killing the evil things that lie in the Underdark, but they're lawful good. While they're no mercy and, you know, we're going to burn everything that's evil, they are down there trying to help people that have gotten lost or imprisoned in the Underdark. Right. And they kind of become your spec ops people that go through the Underdark just searching for these lost travelers. Right. That wasn't nearly as extensive as I thought it could, <laughs> could be, but I mean, it's, hey, you know, this is uh, one of the concepts that you could have, especially with the fiery uh, trying to lean into kind of the burning passion, but also the light in the sense of it would make sense that these people are in dark places. They're bringing light to places where there is none. And I think that's kind of a cool concept to play with. Definitely a cool character uh, concept if you're playing campaigns like Curse of Strahd or Descent into Avernus where there's a lot of evil going on. Right, a lot of dark. And there's a lot of sense of, and lots of dark, both morally and physically dark. Having a cleric of light to go in there and be like, no, I'm bringing light to this dark place. Yes. I shine. I will never stop sparkling. There you go. <laughs> a, a sparkle light <laughs> domain. What the fuck are we doing, buddy? The Twitter domain. His aesthetic is just, what's the French kid from My Hero Academia? That guy. Wow. Actually, you know what? To be completely honest, this is going to satisfy the anime fans out there. A light domain that's based on All Might, where, you know, who's basically a Superman, you know, he comes in, oh, mm, mm -hmm. you know, and breaks everybody's jaw. Yeah. It, have a multi-class and barbarian. You're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that makes sense. All right. Well, Clerics 2020, we're rocking through it. I think we're doing great so far. Uh, thank you all for the support. Yeah. And uh, I am going to go buy my tasers. You all have a good night. All right. All right, see ya. You've just been listening to Dumpstat, a podcast presented by Horizon Kingdoms. Horizon Kingdoms is a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition server that's free to play. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and join up on Discord to join in on a new adventure. For more Dumpstat, be sure to find us on your favorite podcast platform and subscribe.